So here's the uh, second test run of the emulator. Um, it's a peculiar device, I can say. This is a gravity flooded evaporator I call the emulator. This is the sight glass for it. Probably running a little dry right now. I'm actually letting it go dry. Uh, the entire contents uh, inside here is a, uh, uh, a large copper device, a series of coils, uh, a separator tank that separates flash gas out and sends it directly through the suction line back to this York 210 compressor. Uh, I don't have the tack on right now, but I think it's probably running somewhere around mm, 120 RPM, maybe, probably maybe a little less. Uh, the interior of this box right now is negative 28. Uh, suction pressure is pretty damn low. We're down around 1 or 2 PSI, which corresponds to like negative 36 uh, evaporator temperature. So I'm just kind of beating the hell out of it right now, just seeing what it'll do. Um, this box is lined with uh, this same uh, uh, foil, bubble foil. Um, the, the box isn't complete as far as the uh, one and a half inches of uh, uh, extruded polystyrene. I didn't have enough, it's just scrap pieces. Um, but the whole box is, is made of this, so there's, there's no foam lid for it. But uh, here we got negative 29, uh, 150 pounds. Um, discharge temperature pretty closely corresponds to what the actual condenser temperature is. As far as how much uh, superheat I'm producing, I don't really know exactly. I haven't gotten to that point. It's just fooling around right now. Um, just water-cooled condenser. So my previous video is the same condenser. Uh, it's just a quarter-inch tubing coil up inside. Um, try to crack this thing open a little bit and get a look inside. There's four of these coils. They're all brazed into a, a one-inch column in the center, which is the uh, uh, gas separator. And uh, just put a little bit of water down there in a freeze. Yeah, that's coming along. Nope, not yet. Um, big design flaw in this setup, at least with uh, insulating it, is the coils are sitting in the bottom. So. Uh, there's really no opportunity for much air circulation inside. And between air circulation, convection, and um, uh, radiation, uh, not much is gonna, gonna freeze that water. Um, so in future designs, I'm actually gonna build a um, uh, uh, water film uh, ice machine, which actually just pump water, uh, I think, I think. Um, future designs of the um, uh, ebulator, the evaporator coils are probably going to be uh, built a little different, maybe a flat plate design. Um, so I want to see how much ice I can make. So I, I need direct conduction to do it remotely efficiently. I mean, operating at these ridiculous evaporator pressures is uh, it's unreasonable. Negative 31, let me think's cold. And you can hear all the noise the compressor's making. There's a hell of a compression ratio right now. We're talking like 15 pounds absolute on the suction side and probably 165 pounds on the discharge side. So you do the math. Uh, what we have here as far as these temperatures is the uh, discharge temperature, which is taken right here out of the compressor. Then we have a subcooled temperature, which is uh, the temperature after the condenser. But uh, that one, that temperature I'm sure isn't correct and uh, it's being messed up because uh, it's actually taken underneath some insulation um, on the, the high side, but after it enters the box. So that, that needs to be moved back up, up here. Um, the next temperature is after this line enters the box, it actually is brazed and goes through the separator and liquid low side refrigerant um, pulls heat off of the, uh, the, the high side line, uh, subcooling. That, and uh, uh, getting that that uh, uh, that flash gas that would be produced through the throttling valve up and out and uh, back through the suction line and into the compressor directly, rather than flashing through the um, uh, uh, rather than flashing through the throttling valve. So that temperature right now, at least the readout, is about negative six. Um, and then finally is the uh, suction temperature. And I actually don't even know how accurate that is. Um, it, it, it probably is relatively high considering that um, we're 
we're actually boiling at about negative 36, negative 40 maybe even right now. Um, actually, probably close to negative 44 since that's the uh, boiling temperature of um, propane and atmospheric pressure. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I wouldn't expect that much uh, suction superheat. Uh, so that might actually be screwed up through the copper because uh, that temperature is taken about right here. So maybe it's picking up some heat off the compressor. Um, I, uh, I may actually move that line back here, um, see what the difference is. Um, but um, anyway, just as a kind of a qualitative group goofing around study, it's, um, it's fun to play with and it's fun to try to regulate the uh, liquid, liquid level right now. Right now the throttling valve is pretty much just closed down. I made this little extension here to control it. Um, and I'm going to actually let it go and uh, continue beating the hell out of it to see how low that temperature will get. But if I were to crack this thing open right now, um, immediately you'd see the uh, suction pressure dro uh, rise dramatically as liquid refrigerant enters into the system. And eventually what you would see is a liquid level rise up and probably come well over this, this sight glass. And uh, then as they close down the throttling valve, um, you'd see uh, uh, a lot of bubbles and stuff come up through there as, as gases are, are boiling off and escaping. Um, and then eventually that, that liquid level will come back down and settle. Um, it's kind of difficult to regulate this. Um, but, um, yeah, anyway, as for now, it's, uh, it's a good time. It's good fun. And uh, I'm going to see how low this son of a bitch will go. Even if I pull it into a vacuum, I don't really care. I think it's just good fun. I mean, that's air temperature inside. Might be getting something off radiation, just off the coils directly, but uh, that's, that's good fun. That's, that's neat. Anyway. Now, there's some other videos that describe this. This hasn't changed really at all. Wooden flywheel. I do know that at very low speeds, uh, this motor doesn't have enough torque to keep the thing running, and it starts to surge. But uh, if I do decide that I want to run at some of those lower speeds, I'm going to have to gear down a little more. And uh, at some point, I may add some uh, mass to this, this, this flywheel here for this pulley. So anyway, got to get back.